Hey everyone, I hope you guys are having a great day. Today we're looking into Excellus Technologies and we're going to see why this company looks so cheap and so interesting. So a quick description, basically the company produces components for the semiconductor industry. Alright, so as usual we're going to start by the growth. There's one really interesting part that I'm going to explain right after about the growth. But let's, let's first start with the year-over-year -year revenue growth. So first, it increased by 40% for the revenue, which is pretty good. The net income also increased by 97%. So that's almost doubling your net income year over year. So that's pretty good. The net cash flow increased by 127%. That's huge as well. And the book value has been also increasing by 12%, which is good. Now for the revenue, we can see that it's currently at its all-time highs in 2022. And we can see that it's been going up and down, but it's following a clear trend since 2019, which is good to see. All right, so here we have Excellus Technologies customers growth by industry in the fourth quarter of 2021. We can see right away that the biggest growth came in the customers in renewable energy services and equipment industry. These customers are such as Enphase Energy and First Solar. These are just examples of the customers that Excellus serves in this segment. And why is this so important for the growth of Exilis is because here we can see renewable consumption worldwide from 2020 to 2018. And then we have a forecast up to 2050. And if you look here at today, about 35 exajoules, we can see that the con this consumption of renewables are literally going to increase by 360%. That is massive growth. And even if you just look at 2030, for example, that's already doubling. So this is just to say how quickly renewable consumption is going to increase worldwide. And we just, we're just we literally just seeing in the results of Excellus that this segment is really going the fastest. So this is a good thing to see. And this is going to have a big impact on its sales, revenue, and net income. All right, so if you're an investor or someone who's looking to learn about investments, this is the kind of analysis that we do in this channel. We look at companies focusing on their fundamentals and you try to see if they're attractive compared to the current valuations in the market. So if you want to learn more about these things, feel free to subscribe and it would mean a lot to me. Now, if you look at the profitability, we can see already that gross margin is average at 43%, operating margin 19%, average again, net margin at 9, at 15% average. Free cash flow though is at 21%, which is good. And what's interesting is that free cash flow as a percentage of earnings is at more than 100%, which means that the free cash flows are increasing faster than the, than the net income. Now, if you look at the financial health of the company, we can see that its current ratio is at 4.12. This is really good. The company sh doesn't look like it has any trouble paying its short-term uh, obligations. The shares are decreasing, which is once again good, which means that there's no dilution at all. And that's really good to see. What I wanna show here is that the total cash is sitting at almost $300 million, whereas the total debt is about $50 million. That's pretty good. I like these kind of companies. Basically, the company could do this and the next day it has no debt and still have cash left over, which is pretty good to see. Now here, Axelis only has a market cap of $1.85 billion. That's not a, that big of a company. And if you take into account this cash, it represents about 16% of the company. So you can basically take that 16% off because it's already cash, right? So this is already a big discount if you were to buy um, shares of this company. All right, now for my valuation. Let's look at the current PE ratio. It's at 19. The price to free cash flow is currently at 13.24. These are pretty low valuations. And if we account for the cash position, like we said, this brings us to a PE of 15.96 and a price to free cash flow of 11.12. These are really low valuations, to be honest. And I calculated the five year compounded annual growth rate of the revenue and it's at 18.25%. The company is still growing pretty fast and you're gonna see right after what analysts think about the growth of the company. And I mean, these valuations are really low. And if you take into account the growth that we're just seeing in the renewable energy consumption and the segment that's growing from this company, there's still a lot of growth left. And I don't think that these valuations are justifying this growth. All right, now let's look at the analyst insight. We can see on average expecting a price target of $86 which is an upside of 57%. For the revenue, the compounded annual growth rate for the next five years for the revenue is at almost 16%. And for the earnings per shares, they're at 30%. Like I said earlier, this is still growth. Like this is still important growth and the valuations are now reflecting this kind of growth. So really guys, if you take all of this into account, the financial health being strong and a good potential outlook growth for the future long-term, 
the stock really looks undervalued in these valuations. That's my really honest opinion. The only red flag that I've found so far is that a lot of insiders are selling the stock. We can see here in 2022, uh, this is recently too, they've been a lot of sales, like executive, president, CEO, executive VP, executive VP, CFO, independent director. Anyways, a lot of sellings uh, recently from the insiders. As you guys know, the insiders usually know more than what we know from the outside. But this being said, everything else really shows good signs for the company and the valuations look really undervalued. That was it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to support the channel. It means a lot and I'll see you on the next one.